when you talk about psychopaths or in the DSM, we talk about this as antisocial personality disorder, a lot of clinicians won't go near it because they really feel like these people can't be fixed, right. as you were referencing before. Yeah. They don't understand morality the same way that normal people do. And you saw some brain findings that reflect that. So explain to us a little bit about what you found in terms of those differences. Yeah, in order to do scans, you usually probe the brain with some sort of stimuli. So we show people a mix of stimuli of like flowers and puppy dogs, mm -hmm. things that are either neutral or invoke empathy, different kinds, there's like four different kinds of empathy, but invoke empathy. And we alternate that with pictures that are really gruesome. I mean, this is like buses mm -hmm. of kids on fire, and I mean, it's stuff that freaks people out. Now, if you show that to a psychopath, and you look at the brain pattern, uh, when they see the bus burning, it's the same as when they're looking at a, a bunch of roses. It, they, it's mm -hmm. not that they can't see it, they, their whole visual system, they can see it, it just doesn't register as something important. It's like being a scofflaw. You know it's illegal, but there are a lot of things people do that are like, well, that's not really immoral. Wow. It's that sort of thing, I but mean, for terrible stuff. So, so fascinating. James, is there going to be a place that we can use this technology to s sort of help us predict who are these people that are going to go off the deep end and do horrific things, horrific acts? Yeah, there, there seems to be two biological determinants. One is genetics. Now, there are no psychopath genes, but there are the traits of psychopaths, mm -hmm. and the genes are associated with the traits. Right. Certain alleles, that is what you inherit from your mother and father. You've heard of these warrior genes. Well, that's just one, one of them. There's about 15 warrior genes. And so there's the genetic part, but there's also a brain development part that's right. critical. And the, the key thing is every psychopath we've looked at, and, it, and it's true for dictators too, every one of them was either abandoned in the first two or three years of life mm -hmm. or they were abused somehow. Every one, every killer I looked at. And even a lot of these killers won't say that. They'll say, well, it's pornography. It's, 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 they all have that core thing. So there's these two biological determinants and then the environmental thing, which is really between birth, two and three years oh, old. It's, it's a scary thing. Right. And it, yet at the same time, I like that you're able to find some concrete evidence of potentially what a killer's brain looks like.